Senator Young. Thank you, sir. I understand everything in politics is a matter of timing. Uh, sir, <laughs> I'd just like to address uh, Mr Mitchell's comments and, um, and thank him for his uh, contribution, also his contribution in the committee, and I believe as a member of the committee, as I said before, uh, you know, he warrants a response. Um, we've had many people uh, speak on this bill in the House and uh, particularly those members of the committee have brought some thoughtfulness to it. Now, in terms of uh, SOP 150, which the member has been talking about and presented right now, the proposal was intended to create this loading on any casual employment, giving benefit to the workers and incentive to the employee to move the employee onto a part-time or full-time uh, contract. And as he uh, listed off, um, all of that loading equates to 19% increase. Uh, on the hourly, average hourly rate, 1.6 for sick and bereavement leave, 4.4 per cent for statutory holidays, 8 per cent for standard holiday pay, and a 5 per cent casual loading. Sir, it isn't, it, it isn't intended in this bill to dispense with casual agreements. Now, some people may not like them, but casual agreements uh, have their place in the job market. And as we heard from many submitters, uh, casual agreements work for many people. Uh, and, sir, it's also important to understand that casual em employees... Casual Sorry, em sir. Jonathan Young. Thank you. That casual employees... I'll, I'll, I'll go hastily. Casual employees already have an 8% uh, loading for holiday pay. Uh, if the employee's work is so intermittent or irregular that it is impractical to provide four weeks holiday, then holiday pay is paid at not less than 8% of gross earnings. Sick leave and bereavement leave uh, also are an entitlement. An employee has entitlement if, A, they have completed six months continuous employment with the employer, or if they have worked over a six-month period, at least 10 hours a week on average, and no less than one hour each week, and 40 hours each month. So if a casual worker uh, as an employee is to be required to work a public holiday, it must be, must be stated in the agreement. And if they work a public holiday, they receive time and a half. If they do not work a public holiday, but the day would otherwise be a working day, then they are paid for that day. So what I'm saying, sir, is that many of these loadings that the member has presented in his SOP already exist in employment law. And so essentially, what he is adding is the 5% casual loading. Sir, so the reason why, uh, with due respect, that we are not supporting his SOP is because that 5% casual loading might actually be an incentive for employers to have more casual workers rather than bring them on into uh, permanent uh, part-time or full-time work. And, sir, so we just wanted to make that uh, known that that was our view, and we thank you for your contribution.